Hey folks, so this video is going to show you how to create uh, a sheet in Revit that has a 3D view placed on it and to just adjust the settings and how to play with it, things like that. So I'm flipping over to Revit. I'm going to use my topo surfaced ranch house here. Uh, let me rotate this a little. Why is this not cooperating? There we go. <coughs> Excuse me. So it can help to get your view into a good spot. Um, for starters here. What I like to do is to actually duplicate the 3D view, the original one that has those brackets in it. Uh, and if we, you could say duplicate or duplicate with detailing, um, they will both create what's known as an independent view. The detailing has to do with uh, things that you've added to it. So right now it doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to hit duplicate. That's going to create another view here. And you can right click this and rename it. Be aware that it may give you an error because of these curly brackets if you try to click off it. It's funny that Revit's allowed to name things with curly brackets, but then we are not. So if you go to rename that, make sure you get rid of those curly brackets. So you could just call this like 3D, 3D pictorial or just pictorial view or something like that because this is like a picture versus our uh, plans and, and our other drawings or orthographics. Then... This will be the one that if you change this or zoom it or anything, it's going to change on your sheet. So you can keep looking in this view and moving it around the, the original one without screwing up your sheet. So anyways, now that we've gotten that out of the way, um, we're going to go down here to our sheets. And I've already got a sheet going here. I don't think so. This has some elevations on it. Um, remember, I'm looking for a sheet with elevations, a sheet with some plans of your mansion or whatever other project you're working on. I'm going to call this elevations. Uh, you can rename these sheets. But to add a new sheet, we right click on sheets. And if you're on a Chromebook, that's a two finger click, even if you're using guacamole. Pick new sheet. And then you can load in a title block if you don't already have one here. Remember, load, find the title blocks folder. And in there, there's a number of options. Um, if we stick to eight and a half by 11, those are very easy to print at home. Uh, optionally, you could use the 11 by 17 horizontal version, especially uh, for these um, mansions, if, if this is for the mansion project that you're watching this video, because they're quite large. And this would be able to be printed on the color printer in the classroom. This is an 11 by 17 or tabloid size sheet. Um, but I'm just going to add for now a regular eight and a half by 11 vertical sheet. So, uh, all right, next. To get our 3D view on there, we simply drag and drop. Now it's Humongo, so I'm gonna click to place it, just one left click, and it's bleeding all off the page. If we play with this scale, remember the, uh, the bigger this number, the bigger it's gonna be. Or I'm sorry, the, the, the bigger the number on the right, then the, the left number, the bigger that the actual drawing is going to be here. So in this case, um, the let's see, an eighth of an inch equals a foot is bigger than, um, excuse me, I am just tripping over my words left and right here. It's been a long day, folks. So basically, I would go with one of these smaller ones. There we go. Like a sixteenth of an inch equals a foot. My goodness, that's what I was looking for. That is going to give you, uh, you know, something that might fit on this page. You could go smaller if we've got a thirty-second of an inch equals a foot. There we go. That would be even tinier. And you notice every time you move your mouse away from this box, it hits that that apply button. For my scale here, I'm going to stick with that one sixteenth. But you need to play if you're doing something large like a mansion. You can't zoom in or out in this view. That's the one thing you can't really change. You can use the arrow keys on the keyboard to adjust this. And now we have something that fits nicely on this page. It's framed pretty well. So the next steps here are, of course, to kind of get rid of and clean up some of these other things that are going on here. So to, for instance, hide these level views here, I'm going to double click on my viewport to start editing it. And then I can right click on one of these levels and I can say hide in view. And I'm going to actually hide the whole category. So it's going to hide the category of level markers. So they will all disappear. I could hide the category of windows and it would hide all of the windows 
on the house. All right. That's not what we want to do right now. So I'm going to hit undo, but that's an option and that's a useful one uh, when you're working in Revit. So now I've got this place pretty well. I have uh, the, um, I've gotten the, those level markers hidden here. So if I double click outside of that box, it's going to stop editing outside of the viewport is what I should really call it. And the last step would be to move around this little title option, this little title label here. I think they call it a view label, the shape handle for the viewport. Um, so I've moved that over. So that looks a little better. I want that to be closer. Be sure when you're trying to move that, whoops, that you don't have your viewport selected because if you do, you're going to accidentally drag the whole viewport with it. So you want to make sure nothing's selected by clicking over here in some white space, and then you'll be able to drag that shape handle around. But if you want to adjust the size of it, you do actually have to pick the viewport and then a little blue dot appears. You can drag this over and make everything look real pretty. And now this would be gorgeous to print out. Now you might be finding, wait a minute, there is, mine is just white. Mine looks something like this or maybe something like this. It's no good. It looks like garbage. So just remember, you can go down here and change your visual styles to realistic and that's going to allow all of the textures to come through that you chose and if that's not working for you or it's not appearing like right now it's not there anymore you have to make sure that you've double clicked inside the viewport and are editing the viewport so you have to remember there's two modes here there's editing the viewport and then there's sort of editing like the sheet so you make sure you understand how to switch between the two of those i would also advise turning the detail level to fine as it will cause certain little details to change. Like if we watch really closely at the door handle here, if I go back to medium, the door handle disappears. So if you want this to look nice, you gotta put it on fine mode and it's gonna come out a lot better. And that's gonna give you your house. It still looks like it's floating in space. When we get into rendering, uh, we'll talk about how to add a background and do some other things like that. But you know what? Looks a heck of a lot more grounded and proportional with some trees and shrubs around it. So you can watch that video about how to add a topo surface and trees if you want. But this is just the basic video for placing those 3D views. And remember, almost the same things apply if you're trying to add, like if we were going to add floor plans to this view, I could drag level one. Uh-oh. Whoops. I could drag level one right onto this sheet slap it down there, go over here, oops, not that, adjust the scale. So make that number on the left smaller while leaving the one on the right bigger. Actually, I think it was good the way that it was before. Yeah, that'll fit pretty well. And then you can, of course, double click in the viewport. You can go to uh, your extents option and turn on the crop region. And that'll let you go here and crop out if you don't want all the trees showing up on the outside. You can crop that stuff out of there so we don't see it anymore. And that can make things look a little cleaner. Uh, if you wanna turn on that box around there, make sure you're editing the view and just turn off crop region visible and it'll make that invisible. You wanna hide these trees, you can hide them by category just like we did before. And to edit that bar down on the bottom, make sure nothing is selected drag the bar where you want it, the shape handle there. And then if you wanna change the width of that bar, you have to pick the view by clicking it once and drag that little shape handle over. And that's going to give you your level one view. You can drag the whole viewport around, get it positioned nicely where you want it. And then you could keep going, adding level two and so on. So hope this video helps. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions and I look forward to seeing your designs.